What it do, beautiful people? It's your boy Crispy T with update number one of Calling of a Revenous Bird, episode 35. That is update number one of Calling of a Revenous Bird, episode 35. Okay, so over here, in this original prophecy, it was as um, it was actually given to me by the Holy Spirit. And over here was the matter of the piece of popular heresy that you do hear of in uh, most of these um, churches and particularly the older traditional ones and um, that you do hear that Jesus was in hell and tortured f f uh, further for like three days. So this is just addressing that particular part of that prophecy that I gave in episode 35. So it was something else to it, but there was a particular passage which I said was actually echoed through to me by demonic presence over there. So um, yeah, uh, this is what it's addressing. And this was actually something that came to me on the either the morning or Friday, the 26th of April, or it was the following day, which was the Saturday, the 27th of April. So I actually received a night vision. I was basically just laying still and I was completely motionless. And it portrayed a particular event that was actually told of in the Bible, right? So while I was in the vision, I actually, of course, was laying motionless. And God started giving me a revelation, which actually showed the Lord Jesus during the time he was in Hades for those three days. And as I saw the Lord in a seemingly what was a dark, dark, dark tunnel with no bright light around it, where in fact it looked like a deep, dim cave. So he, he that is in the Lord Jesus Christ, actually advanced to Satan and a few of the rebellious demons. Then he grabbed a key from Satan, which was shaped like a cross. Further than that, at that point, the Lord's voice said that it was a victory that he had already won, even prior to his first coming, in an assured and dominant manner. I then regained my senses after lying almost paralyzed for some sec seconds after that. So basically, I was like still lying there, and I'm thinking, what am I seeing? And I'm still seeing, thinking I'm seeing something and yeah, eventually it like took, since that whole vision played out, I then sort of got, got up again. <laughs> um, I didn't get up immediately. I, I pretty much was thinking, oh dear, I, I wonder what's going on now. So it was just one of those weird white night visions where I was completely awake, just happened to sitting on my bed and yeah, it started playing out. So, and in particularly, that's what happened. That um, essentially was the Lord Jesus Christ grabbing that key, um, and he then said to Satan, uh, "Well, well, not and didn't say anything to Satan. He grabbed it completely from Satan. It was in the shape of a cross, as in the key itself, and he said that was a victory that he pretty much guaranteed." from the onset and um, from the beginning of time. So when I'm interpreting this revelation, um, I'm going to be looking at a few elements. And aside from that, and I just want to say, first of all, um, that the revelation does depict that it unequivocally uh, shows the that the valley of death, known as Hades or Sheol in, Jew, in, uh, Jew, in Hebrew, is not the eternal burning lake of fire called hell. So it's definitely not the eternal burning lake of fire called hell. So firstly, um, how am I going to interpret this? I'm just going to use the scriptures in this case. So in Proverbs 8.14, we see what the Lord Jesus Christ that boldly declares this in the even in the Old Testament. And he said, I make plans and carry them out. I have understanding and I am strong. So that was in Proverbs 8 verse 14. So we see this here, that, um, which speaks about how just it was spoken with supreme confidence and, and a, a great assurance that uh, before the beginning of creation, really, um, this was depicting uh, what the Lord Jesus Christ was saying, that um, how he was there from the very beginning, if you read the whole of Proverbs 8. And yeah, and why he would even be able to say something like um, guarantee a victory well in advance. Because he is God who lived and still lives among us, known as Emmanuel, you know, in Isaiah 7 verse 14. So even um, in John 15 verse 4, it speaks about how he abides in us still. And if you abide in him, you'll abide in us. So that's another thing why I meant the second part of how he still lives among us. So I'm not saying that he's already come back. I mean, 
I've heard some weird teachings by people in, who call themselves um, ministers or ministers of God's truth, but they said, oh, Jesus has already come back, which is uh, just complete... I don't know. Um, in any case, I, I, I try not to you go on about a person. I just go on about a certain teaching and just keep it moving. Um, but of course, um, if it ever gets too advanced, I mean, I don't know if I'm the type of person who will have to get on and say, hey, watch for this. This is a lie. Do not go for this person. But anyway, if you hear that teaching, just be careful of that. So that's what I mean by the fact that when I say he still lives among us, because we know he's rejoined the father in heaven. And for by that, he still has access to us in in spirit and in truth. That's if you are actually, well, still living in the presence of God because you can have an afflicted spirit within you. Um, you've seen that some people can be demon demon possessed. Hence, they whenever you hear people say, I have the spirit within me, just be careful. You don't know which one. That's why, um, yeah, you need to test it out as to which spirit it actually is. Is it God's Holy Spirit or is it the an evil one, an unclean spirit, so to speak? Anyway, sorry to digress on that one, but I just had to just um, clarify that as to what I meant by that Christ who did live among us and still lives among us. You know, of course, um, he was resurrected, so he does still live. So don't get it twisted. But yeah, so... When this passage of um, those um, three days, and I was speaking about the way he was in Hades, was of course when he was uh, put to death at the cross, and after he was cross crucified. And the Lord Jesus Christ um, actually had said this to the scribes at the time during his earthly ministry. And when the Pharisees and the scribes and they came to him uh, seeking a sign, Jesus pointed to them how the reluctant prophet Jonah, um, who had to basically who, who um, God gave him a command and he then decided, no, he's going to go do his own thing. And God confronted him um, and ended up, <laughs> he ended up spending three days in the belly of a whale. But um, in Matthew 12, 14, Matthew 12, 40, verse 40, 40, when he said, in the same way that Jonah spent three days and nights in the big fish, so will the son of man spend three days and nights in the depths of the earth. So, that was the whole time denoting what was going on in Hades and everything else. So in the um, later on, so of course, um, the keys to Hades, as you refers to in Revelation 1 verse 17. Yeah, sorry. Revelation 1 verse 17 to 18, where the Lord Jesus Christ said, Fear not, I am the first and the last and the living one. I died and behold, I'm alive forevermore and I have the keys of death and Hades. So that will be the English Standard Version of the translation of that. So um, I'll, read that, I'll read that again so that um, people are not thrown off. Fear not, I am the first and the last and the living one. I died and behold, I am alive forevermore and I have the keys of death and Hades. So the Lord Jesus had the victory rigged for our favor, in our favor. Since the beginning, the, uh, the whole battle with Satan was actually skewed towards us. For the, even in the very first prophecy in the Bible was um, when God said to Satan in Genesis 3.15 that her offspring will crush your head and you will bite her offspring's heels. So what will happen and what, what is important and indicative to note here is that it points to the cross when considering how even the Lord, the Lord uh, how God himself revealed to me as the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ in episode 13 of Calling of a Revenous Bird which was denoted by the symbol of the cross or the symbol or the flaming sword in the Garden of Eden. So I will have episode 13's link in the description box. Please just check that out. Or if you're checking the article, go straight straight through the article and read through this. And furthermore, when the Lord Jesus was put to death on the cross, it was commonly known that when people were actually crucified, right, as far as that um, judgment in the in the passage there in Genesis 3.14, that her offspring will crush your head and you will bite her offspring's heel. So back to this was um, what was common back then is that people who were crucified, they would get, end up getting bruised heels because of the pressure of, them, of, of the victims keeping themselves up by trying to raise their body weight up on their heels so that um, they would be able to breathe. And hence their heels that then, of course, bruise and why the Lord Jesus Christ had his heel bruised in this instance by the snake or Satan um, when he 
crucified him or had him crucified. So that was quite an interesting thing and a quite an interesting passage of history that one needs to check out. And also understand it is also interesting how the crushing of a head of uh, was worded between the before the biting of the heel. Even though Satan is still pretty much the rule of the world, um, J- Jesus did say in John 16 and 11 that he's already kind of he's already judged, meaning that he's already defeated. So even when um, that particular prophecy was the very first one in the whole Bible, um, was actually started by saying her offspring will crush your head, meaning that his dominion will be taken. It was already st- stated and definitive from the onset that um, the Lord Jesus Christ already had victory. So, yeah, um, I'm just bringing this out here. Of course, I have to out of obedience and what I was given that just to make it clear that I was um, just to reinforce the fact that it w- it is a demonic teaching as to say that he was tortured in hell because, first of all, these demons are still on the earth. They're not even in hell as yet. And again, that is something that was going to be reserved at a l- later point in time. And they will, yeah, get the eternal, whatever's due to them in the eternal fire and the lake of fire. And that is definitely not where the Lord Jesus was. He was in Hades or is known in in Hebrew as Sheol. So, which is actually just depicted by a valley of the dead, really. And that's where he got the victory and took the key. And he now, as he said there in Revelation 1, has basically said that in one, yeah, Revelation 1, 17 to 18, where he's got the keys and of death and Hades, meaning that he's pretty much got all authority now and just was just waiting to take it. It was just a matter of time and not a matter of if. Anyway, put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, people, and everything else in your life will work out right. And I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers and bye-bye. Thank you for tuning in.